So in this video, I interview Claire Marshall about how she got into online video, about tips for expanding your creativity, and how to diversify your content in new areas. Coming up. Hey, what's up guys? Sean here with Video Influencers. Hope you build your influence, income, and impact with online video. And I'm sitting here with Claire Marshall, who's a beauty, lifestyle, YouTuber, all around creative. Thank you so much for having me. This is so exciting. I'm pumped that you're here and we're here at VidCon. And for a lot of people in our audience, they're gonna know who you are, but just for those who are maybe being introduced to you for the first time, what's kind of been your story and your progression of getting into online video? Well, I'm basic I was a makeup artist, a freelance makeup artist before I kind of got into the whole YouTube game, but I was a huge fan of YouTube. I watched beauty videos. Um, I watched, you know, uh, all these different vloggers and stuff like that to kind of like past the time, I guess you could say. When you're a freelancer, you have gaps. Um, but eventually, one day, when I, I had just moved out to LA, I was having a harder time finding work. Um, and I kind of was like, you know, I really want to create something to just keep my creative juices going. And I was like, you know, I can do YouTube. I think I could, you know, take people by, behind the scenes to show them like what it's like to be on set and stuff like that. And that's kind of how I started. And it's kind of just, uh, I discovered my creativity, I guess you could say. and. I, I, that's kind of just by my thing is just making creative content now. And how did you get into like literally the video side? Did you teach yourself to edit? Did you? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of nerdy to say, but I've always been kind of tech savvy, I guess you could say. Um, you know, back in the day when you were on MySpace, I used to, you know, write my own code and like change my profile and whatnot. Um, so once it came to video, I already had like a point and shoot. I didn't have any fancy equipment. I pretty much just set up a stack of books, put a camera down and started talking to the camera. It was really awkward at first, which I'm sure is pretty normal for everybody. Um, and then it just kind of, you know, became a thing and I started doing it more often and I was really excited about the response and like the engagement with you know, people that were watching and just kept going with it pretty much. I kind of just followed my gut and, you know, followed where my heart was kind of telling me to go. Got it. That's awesome. Now, one of the panels that you're doing here at, at VidCon is all about beauty into a business. And a lot of people, of course, I'm sure you started, you started YouTube out of creativity, pure mm -hmm. creativity, but then you've also brought it into integrating with probably a lot of things. What are some of your tips for how that progression has been? Uh, well, sorry. Beauty into a business. So um, monetizing your channel and then diversifying maybe brand deals. I mean, I'm not sure, you know, what kind of things that you'd be sharing on that panel. Um, I mean, honestly, I kind of have just come like rolled with the punches. It's all new to me. I still feel very green in the space. And but I just kind of go with what when a brand approaches me, I kind of go with what I think, you know, they want. And then also what I creatively just come up with. I just recently did a collaboration with Shiseido. And you know, their whole campaign was like, go mirrorless. They wanted, you know, to talk about their foundation and how they really wanted it to be something that you wore with confidence and that did, you didn't have to worry about it. And I took that and I kind of took that as we already worry about so much like let's not worry about our makeup and it became this whole creative thing that wasn't a makeup tutorial necessarily but it went in a totally different direction and the response was really interesting to see like I was actually really nervous about it but it just goes to show that a brand is coming to you for a reason and they're trusting you and you shouldn't be afraid to kind of like give your voice and your creativity and I think that that kind of concept has been successful for me and I try to sh like share that with everyone and not be afraid to kind of like, you know, take the reins a little bit. And I love that you brought that up because I think if, if it's the same video, I was watching one of the videos, it was so well done and the brand integration was so your style, your creativity that people in the comments were literally thanking you. Yeah, it was so crazy. I mean, thank you for watching it first of yeah. all. Um, but yeah, no, I was really nervous about it because I think a lot of times creators are nervous about doing sponsored content because um, it's, it's, you know, one of those things where I think the audience initially you think is going to, you know, give it a thumbs down because it's sponsored, therefore they think it's affecting your voice and your opinion, and it doesn't have to. And um, I think something interesting that I also have tried is, I know in the US it's not required, but in the UK, you know, they're required to put ad on the title. And um, I started to do a um, collaboration with Skype where I did a series of four videos, and the first video I put up didn't have ad in the title, but people were kind of like, you know, shouldn't this have ad in it maybe? And uh, I kind of from now on have done ad in the title and people have actually been really, you know, happy about it. And they're like, we really respect you for doing that and being confident in your content enough mm. to just like put it out there. 
And for me, it's kind of freed me up because I'm not nervous anymore. They know right away that it's a you know collaborative project and I'm going to do whatever I'm going to do and I can kind of like just go with it and put it out there. So Awesome. That's awesome. Now, switching gears, one of your other panels is all about creativity mm -hmm. and your style, not just your style, but mm -hmm. then your style of your photography, obviously your Instagram, your videos. It's incredible. It's really, really Thank good. And so for people looking up to you and influencers that want to develop their creativity, what would be some of your tips and maybe even what do you think it takes to create a standout brand? Wow, I don't even know. I mean, I, it's 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 funny. I think it's just about being true to yourself. What you find engaging, or you know, what you are drawn to, what your inspiration is. I really like to find inspiration in places that are not the norm. Like I think it's so easy to get into your YouTube bubble and just like watch the same videos. I think it's really awesome to kind of go to a museum, go to movies, or you know, watch really old movies. But I think it's really awesome to kind of like stretch yourself and go out of the box and you know go to like I really love watching old musicals and kind of like taking bits and pieces of that and tying it into you know a YouTube video and whatnot so it's just interesting to kind of like twist I love that you. diversify inspirations Absolutely. and then that can bring that into what you're doing yeah, you never know where you're gonna find it so mm -hmm. good so good now one of the um, uh, you you kind of have a, a main type of content obviously you got Q&A videos beauty videos but you put out a really powerful video on your channel that was very personal oh yeah and you know, with your mom, and but it was different than your normal content. What was kind of you even right at the beginning mm -hmm. of the video? You're talking about like this is hard. It's very personal. Yeah. What was people's response, and what was kind of your process in shifting gears a little bit with what you were putting out? Well, I feel like it's it's funny because I I look at myself as like a a YouTuber in the beauty space, but I also realized that I kind of just started out as a vlogger, so it was very personal to begin with. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of people that watch my channel like that and they feel that relationship with me which I you know really appreciate and I engage with them as much as I can and this is something that has been really you know big in my life and I know that other people deal with it which is you know a parent or a family member with Alzheimer's and going through that whole process and for myself I've been very alone in the process and because you know your audience is you know part of your family at some point you know you you kind of for me felt like it was natural to share it um, but I think I really wanted to share it because I knew that I wasn't alone in the grand scheme of things and it would be really important and helpful to other people to see someone else going through the same thing. Um, so that's kind that's of so, story. That's so good and then yeah. people's response is very powerful in there. Yeah, and it, it was really interesting to see how many people kind of go through the same thing and then also, you know, people sharing that video with other family members and whatnot who are going through the same thing. Yeah. So um, yeah, I'm really glad I did it and I, I I think that's what kind of got me into the more storytelling story side of yeah. YouTube, which I really enjoy. It's amazing, yeah. it's amazing. Okay, here we go, lightning round. Three, two, one, talking or texting? Texting. Cat or dog? Cat, obviously. Book every influencer should read? I don't know, skip. Uh, matte or gloss? Gloss. Number one, must have concert or festival accessory? Um, water. Movie every influencer should watch. A Beautiful Mind. If we were in the middle of a zombie apocalypse and you could only have one item, what item would you have? A machete? That's the first thing that came to my mind. <laughs> Protection. Yeah. yeah. Favorite place in the whole wide world? The beach. Last thing you grabbed out of the fridge? Water. Last song you had on repeat? A highly suspect Lydia. I can't breathe, breathe, Boom. <laughs> Lightning round. <laughs> Uh, where are you at on social media? Of course, we'll link it up and what you're doing, where you're most active and what kind of projects do you have coming up right now? Hmm. Right now, I'm just you know working on my own like home studio so that I can really pump out some creative content that I'm really excited about. Um, I've kind of taken a little bit of a break so that I can kind of rejuvenate a little bit. And um, you can find me on Hey Claire, uh, Instagram, Twitter, and Hey Claire Hey on Snapchat, loving Snapchat. Um, yeah, that's pretty much where I'm active. Awesome, awesome. So check that out in the description below. Claire, thank you so thank much. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. So in this video, I'm scared that that door is about to slam. The whole video is going to be so booper awesome. reels. So in this video, I interview Claire Marshall about this thing, this other thing, and this really powerful thing. What were the three things again? I don't know. I usually hit it. What was the first one?